Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a gravity ice dyed spiral. This one is going to be kind of autumn inspired. The shirt was prepped like normal and I have it turned inside out. For my setup, I have two plastic saw horses and in between I have a piece of vinyl guttering. I've placed the vinyl guttering in between the layers of the shirt. So I just put it up through the hem of the shirt and the other end coming out through the neck of the shirt. Then I've placed an X using a washable marker on the shirt where I'd like to start the center of my spiral. I've found that it's a little bit easier to mark where I want to start the spiral before I put the guttering through the shirt. It's a little bit easy to kind of lose track of what's going on when it's dangling over the top of that piece of guttering. To start the spiral, I'm going to use a pair of locking tweezers, lock them down on the X, then I'm going to use a microwave splatter guard. And this splatter guard has got a hole in the center. I'm going to place it with the flat side down over the top of my tweezers, and then I'm just going to start to spiral. The splatter guard helps me to keep the folds about the same height. Because I have half of the shirt down below and half of the shirt on top of the guttering, I cannot go ahead and spiral until the entire shirt is spiraled up. So what I have to do is push the rest of the shirt, like the top or the neck of the shirt and the hem of the shirt, up close to my spiral and then just add a few folds in there with my hands. It can be a little precarious if you saw my spiral kind of flopped over there for a minute. But if you work with it, you can get them all smashed together. It is important to do this when the shirt is partially damp. Otherwise, it's really hard to get the spiral to stay in place. The goal, too, is to get all of those folds close to each other so that it's easier to put the ice on top. I've chosen kind of an autumn color palette for this shirt. My son was actually reading a book not too long ago that had these colors on the front cover and I thought they worked really well together. So I wrote them down and decided to try them on this shirt. It's amazing how you can get inspiration from all different kinds of places. Okay, so the end where I've placed the peach dye is the neck of the shirt. The other end is the hem of the shirt. I'm gonna start out with Marigold from Dharma and I'm gonna place that a little bit off to the side. I don't want it straight up and down. And I've done a couple of these and I found that I actually like the look when I make my dye lines a little bit wider or I use more dye on the shirt. If I was using more colors, I could make my lines a little bit thinner, but since I'm only using three colors, I'm gonna try to widen the lines just a little bit. On the other side of the neck of the shirt, I'm gonna use peach, which is a Dharma Trading Company color as well. And this dye is very fine. As you can see, it starts to blow around in the wind. Which speaking of that, because I am doing this outside and it is extremely windy here almost all the time, that's one of the reasons why I end up with quite a bit of speckling when I do gravity dyes. Part of it is just, I mean, as you can see, the shirt is hanging down and the dye will kind of fall over onto that area that's hanging down. So it's really tough to avoid that. If you're one who doesn't particularly like speckling on a shirt, well, then this technique might not be for you. The final color that I'm gonna use is Loden, and that is a pro-chemical color. I really like Loden. It's got greens and all kinds of cool color splits. I'm trying to take each one of the colors right up into the spiral, but not oversaturate the spiral with the colors because I want all of the colors to originate from that center point. But if you add too much color right in the center of that spiral, it actually becomes muddy and I don't want that. Once I've applied the dye, I'm gonna add a little bit of additional dry soda ash over the top of the dye. And then in this case, I'm gonna add on a chunk of ice. For this design, I think it's easier to find a, either an old Cool Whip container or some kind of container like that and make your own ice. I think the ice melts a little bit slower when it's in the big chunks and it's just easier to keep on the shirt. This is one of those meal prep containers that I made this piece of ice in. 
So I left the shirt out overnight to allow the ice to melt. And the next morning, it looks like maybe I had a little curious squirrel because something knocked the piece of guttering off of the sawhorses. So I just picked the shirt up and I put it down inside of a plastic tub or tote and put the lid on it and took it inside to allow it to finish processing. I let the shirt process for about 24 hours after I took it inside. Then to rinse the shirt, I took it to my utility sink and I began rinsing it in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Since it's not tied, I just went ahead and warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. If I went ahead and continued rinsing until my water was running almost clear, I would have to rinse for quite a while. And I don't like to do that. So instead, I'm gonna go ahead and just run some really hot water in my utility sink, add a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, then place the shirt inside of the hot water and allow it to soak. When the water cools off, I'll come back and rinse the shirt a little bit more and repeat the soaking process. When my water is remaining almost clear, that's when I'm gonna go ahead and put the shirt along with some Dharma's Professional Textile Detergent into my washing machine and wash it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so I've washed and dried the shirt and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I like the autumn or fall color palette on this shirt. I think these colors do work really well together. I don't use peach a whole lot and I think it's a cool color. Okay, so when you look at the shirt and you look at the back of the shirt, the back of the shirt I think is a little bit lighter than it looks in these flat photos. I think the mannequin shows a more truer color of the back of the shirt. So when you're looking at the shirt, obviously you can see where the peach is over on the left side, the marigolds on the right side, and the Lodens down below. I absolutely love this Loden color. Do you see all those cool color splits that come out of it? You know, it's got the brown and the green, the tan colors, really cool. And I think when I look at this, because of the placement of that, I think of the Loch Ness Monster. I don't know why, just the curve of the spiral and the color that it is, the movement in the dye, that's the first thing I thought of. Which, speaking of movement of the dye, that's one reason why I love this technique. I think the way the dye flows down the shirt and rolls around to the back looks really cool. And then when you look at the back of the shirt, the peach kind of formed a little heart right in the very back of the shirt. That was unexpected, but I think it's kind of cool. And you do see some speckling on the shirt. Remember I talked about that, how, you know, the colors kind of fall down there or the wind blows them around but I don't think it detracts that much from the design. I personally don't mind it that much. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this shirt, but what do you guys think? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed watching the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.